Next news. What do we got? We got, uh, will Call of Duty come to Game Pass? Question. Call of Duty will come to Game Pass. Uh, Microsoft has reportedly decided to add the next installment of Call of Duty to Game Pass. Uh, Wall Street Journal reports that Microsoft will announce the Call of Duty is coming to its uh, game subscription service at the company's Xbox showcase on June 9th. Uh, it was reported earlier this month that Microsoft had been debating whether to put new games of Call of Duty on on Game Pass uh, with concerns from some at the company that the revenue generated from a typical Call of Duty release uh, would be undermined by Game Pass. Activision traditionally sells copies of Call of Duty for around $70 or more, selling more than 20 million copies on average. The brief Wall Street Journal report doesn't make it clear whether Microsoft plans to charge extra for Call of Duty inside of Game Pass, nor whether the company will raise its Game Pass subscription uh, fee. Uh, it is understood that Microsoft has been considering raising the Game Pass Ultimate pricing again. Activision is currently targeting a late October release of the next Call of Duty, which is rumored to be set during the 90s Gulf War. Microsoft will also hold a big Xbox Summer Showcase on June 9th uh, with a special Call of Duty Direct after the main show ends. It is understood that Microsoft is currently planning to announce a new Gears of War game at the show. The showcase will also include a number of releases, a uh, release dates for upcoming games like Flight Simulator 2024, Avowed, and Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. We talked about this last week, didn't we? We talked, well, we talked about what they said in the article, how Microsoft is debating whether or not to put Call of Duty on Game Pass. Yeah. Now it looks like they're going to do it. They have to do it or yeah. else they have to change the model that they sell Game Pass on. But well, if, from judging from that article and the next article I put in the keep, they might be doing that. Xbox will make changes to Game Let's Pass. Let's read the next article. Let's go right Duty. into it. Uh, Wall Street Journal. Last week, the Wall Street Journal claimed, according to its sources, that... Uh, that this year's entry, Call of Duty, yet to be official name, will be added to the subscription service. Um, however, industry insider Shinobi602 has claimed that on recent era that the addition of Call of Duty to Game Pass will also give Xbox the opportunity to refresh the structure accordingly. One user on the forum predicted that there would be a price increase for Game Pass, while another added, uh, for sure, they want the new signups they get from Call of Duty to be the new f to be the new fee to be on the new fee and will probably reorganize the tiers to be a less confusing mess than it is now. While Shinobi 602 didn't spec uh, specifically confirm a price increase or a tier restructure, they did say there will be changes. Yes. Uh, Call of okay. Duty's inclusion on the service was a long held sticking point uh, in the protracted court battles between Act Activision and Xbox. Uh, Mecha Dragon in the chat says, I'm mad this was up for speculation. They said every first party game is coming to Game Pass. Yes. I'm going to tell you why it was up for speculation. Uh, because they've lied about every first party. Uh, they've yeah. lied about the first party games going day and date to Game Pass before. So <laughs> nobody believes them anymore. Other people also think that taking Call of Duty and putting putting it on Game Pass is going to lose them money because so many people buy Call of Duty every year. It's yeah. such a big seller. Yeah. Um, so people think that they have to do something in order to recoup those costs. And it's looking like they might increase the price yeah. of Call of Duty. Some people are saying that there might be a different tier or call like a Call of Duty tier. Yeah. Like they might keep the Activision Blizzard games like as a separate thing. You know, like you yeah. pay, pay $2 more and you get the Activision that Blizzard games. That is insane. I, I, I think they have to do some sort of restructuring right now because uh, they're already not able to keep up with the promises they've made already about Game Pass. Well, Game Pass is plateaued. The people who yeah. want Game Pass subscriptions have Game Pass subscriptions. People who don't, don't have them. So they got to find ways to like make this thing profitable. So I would argue that just having Call of Duty part of Game Pass would increase game pass subscriptions anyway yeah period mm -hmm. because it's a much better value to get game pass than it would be to just buy call of duty and also too that's not even considering the fact that like most people are playing call of duty now on playstation and pc so put that up on the i, I pulled up all of my porn on the computer okay uh <laughs> at least it wasn't the weird stuff so they're they're gonna make a lot of revenue from the playstation sales and the pc sales but you know, they're still leaving a lot of money on the table from the Xbox sales because, you know, people who want it will get the Game Pass subscription. Yeah, but, but that's they, great, but though. But that they won't necessarily keep a Game Pass subscription. You know, they'll pay, right. they'll pay for the month. They'll get their Call of Duty fix. And if there are somebody who likes to play multiplayer, then maybe they'll keep it. Otherwise, they'll, you know, 
they paid eleven dollars for Call of Duty, and that's it. But the reason why the whole industry is switching to subscription models is because people forget about the subscription, or they feel pressured into getting the whole year of the subscription. Right. So you end up paying more than you would have if you just bought the one game. But at the same time, like I feel like people are getting much more savvy about this stuff because you look at, you know, people are already subscribed to like Netflix and Hulu and Max yeah. and Disney and all this other crap, and like they're they're cutting back on what you know movie streaming services they have the same thing's going to happen with games yeah people get annoyed that the subscriptions cost so much yeah. but imagine if you're a playstation user or let yeah imagine if you're a pc user right mm -hmm. you're buying all your stuff on pc and then you got to buy the next call of duty well I could buy the game or I could get the subscription to Game Pass. Then right. you get the subscription to Game Pass. Now you have the subscription. Now you're on Xbox's platform. Mm -hmm. Next time a game comes out, you're going to be more likely to play it on Game Pass because you have the subscription already. You don't have to buy it again. Mm -hmm. And that could slowly move people over to the Xbox platform. But will it be enough to keep the Xbox platform sustainable? I right don't... Just like that's that's the question. That, that's the debate of whether or not to release uh, Call of Duty on Game Pass. That's what the, was at the core of the issue here. I Is think it, that would get new people over to Game Pass. Will it be enough new people for Game Pass to be financially uh, viable? That's the question here. Uh, that I don't know because I don't know what would be successful for Game Pass. Right. There's, there's just so much shit on there. The, I yeah. I, I have no idea. We, I know that they're doubling down over and over again on Game Pass. Right, but like, we still don't really know. Like, they say Game Pass is a success, but, you know, like I said before, the subscriptions have plateaued. Yeah. There's no, like, new people coming in and there's no people, like, leaving. You know, Hi-Fi Rush, they said, was a big hit and hit all our metrics, but apparently wasn't successful enough. So that's the thing, is that I think there is a world where they could put Call of Duty on Game Pass and then Game Pass is just successful because of that. And right. that's it. That's all you need to do is put Call of Duty there, keep doing everything that you've been doing, and everything's fine. But Microsoft has shown time and time again that they kind of like mince their words. They 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 lie a little bit and and, and things aren't the way that they say that they are like with hi-fi rush yeah saying that that's a successful game and then all of a sudden scrapping the, the or saying that we need games like this and then scrapping the whole company mm -hmm. or saying that games will release day one on game pass and then releasing them three days early if you pay extra money that's not what game pass is supposed to be yeah so I think that they're not happy with the game pass model right now and that's why starfield released three days early or whatever the yeah. fuck and I think that come this uh, come this Xbox event, they're going to announce a lot of weird changes to Game Pass. Yeah. And the way that it works. So I think that it's going to end up, there is going to be that weird disparity between Microsoft games and Call of Duty or Activision or yeah. something. It'll be somewhere else. I don't know. But it, people are going to not like what's gonna happen in, yeah in june is, is what my prediction is yeah no i think i think you're right i think there's gonna be a lot of like they're gonna try and spin it in a way that like sounds positive but it's it's not like it's not looking good for the yeah. xbox brand as it were um this segment i think there's plenty of room for a subscription model yeah to work in their favor there should be plenty of room for not only a subscription model but another video game console out there you know, to compete with Sony and Nintendo, but it seems like they take a step forward and then a step back with their decision making over there. Yeah, it, uh, it, I mean, they're trying something different with this subscription model, but yeah, uh, I don't know for whatever reason they're not. Uh, uh so, I mean, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna read Sui Kagura in the chat says, but for fuck's sake, the math don't add up. If you subscribe to Game Pass to play Call of Duty, a sixty dollar game for a year, it's seventy. Uh, do you actually spend that much money on just one game? No, you won't be buying five to six games. Game Pass doesn't make sense on its own. It's just to try and reel users in. Yes, it's to get people over to their platform because they don't have people on their platform. Right. It's just like selling a console at a loss. You're getting people locked into your thing. 
that's the reason that Game Pass would work in their favor. Even right. just having users on your platform is worth a lot of money. But, that's why people spend so much money just getting people's email addresses. Yeah. But at the same time, like, uh, Game Pass is only available on PC and Xbox. And Xbox is, like, in dead last in terms of the console space. Yeah. So having it, like, you know, confined to one console really isn't doing them any favors here. You know, if it was on multiple systems, if it was on Switch, if it was on PlayStation, then maybe you start to see like a little more value in the product. Well, I could see it doing some weird thing on Switch. I can't see it doing that on PlayStation. PlayStation would not want. Well, I mean, I don't know what it would do on Switch. I don't think they want that either because they want people to buy games. These other competitors are going to want you to buy the game through that. Let's not forget Nintendo does have a like an on-demand streaming games platform uh, via Switch Online. Mm -hmm. But those are all older games. Those are all, you know, not, you know, I hate to use this term, but they're not high-priority games. You know, you're not getting day-and-date games. These are games that, like, you know, they can afford to essentially give away for free with a subscription service. With Microsoft, you know, their whole selling point, regardless of how, you know, to the letter they follow it, is new games modern games games released day and date with um wide release you know and those are and those are the games that really need as much money as possible coming in you know as opposed to super mario brothers for like the seventh but what, time what's the difference between this having a subscription service like this and just having a a, a, a first party title that's locked to a console you have a subscription service that's locked to a console or you have your first party game that's locked to a console because the difference is you're either making $70 a sale or $11 a sale. Yeah, but there, no, there's yes. a lot of people who just buy one game a year. And also, can you even get Game Pass for one month? I'm pretty sure yes. they try to force you into no, a year. Target's currently selling like Game Pass <laughs> for, a, no, like they're selling Game Pass uh, subscriptions for like actually a really good deal. I think three months is only 35 bucks. I remember when Halo Infinite came out and everybody yeah. just bought the dollar and just played Halo Infinite for a dollar. And that was great. But uh, they got rid of that almost immediately. Probably, also, they probably, get, probably because everybody was buying it to play Halo Infinite yeah. and nobody was buying Halo Infinite. They get rid of the the like, the like premium. The, whenever there's like a deal on Game Pass, yeah. right before a new game comes out, they get rid of that deal. Yeah. Uh, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate Subscription Digital uh, is currently on sale at Target for $12. For one month? For one month. Three month is on sale for $35. Mm -hmm. So right now, if you buy four three month passes uh, from Target, it is less than a year subscription of Game Pass. I got news for you. You can currently join for $1. For how long? How long is that $1? 14 days. And it it says it's usually, then it's $17 a month. Yeah. For ultimate, oh, that's PC ultimate. Hold on, oh, the ultimate is everything. Yeah, yeah. So, but the thing is here is that you put your credit card in for the dollar, and then they auto bill you for the next month. Yeah. And I'm telling you, people don't remove their credit cards; they just pay over and over again. No, I know there are people who do, but there are also people who are becoming more conscious uh, conscious sh- of the fact that they're paying too much for these services. companies. Know that 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 people leaving their information there for you to suck the money out of their mm-hmm. account is worth more than a one-time $70 purchase. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing this. See, I don't I don't know. I don't necessarily agree with that because you know, you're hearing all these stories like on the other end about how like, you know, streaming is losing billions of dollars for these movie companies. Because the old model of, you know, release a movie in theaters and then release it on home video and then sell the TV rights, that was in place for decades for a reason because that worked. Well, And then the streaming model upended all of that and it was riding high for two years because of the pandemic and then it crashed. Well, even before the pandemic, everyone was saying streaming is ruining movies because uh, everybody's just staying home and, and, and watching them on their TV. But and pe- that was great. We were like, they got to release movies day and date on streaming, so I don't have to go out. But 
then these streaming companies started making shittier and shittier movies <laughs> and doing dumber and dumber shit and splintering out and making too many subscription services. Yeah. They ruined themselves. Yes. It's not that the subscription model doesn't work. It's that they fucked it all up. And, and Xbox is doing the exact same thing. Yes. They're, they're fucking it up for themselves. Yes. It's not the fact that it's a subscription model that is the problem. But the problem is that they're coming out here and saying, this is the value of Game Pass. Oh, except none of that is real. That's what I'm trying to get at is that, you know, the, the danger of the subscription service. You know, they're do they are, you know, they're selling it really well, but they're also repeating all the same mistakes that like all these other subscription services yeah. do. So, you know, right. they, they I agree with you. Yes. It, it's just my my point is that it can work and there's room for it to work. Right. But they're just not doing they yeah. they've they've been I've been on their side for so long and it's so hard to it be on this. Makes it's you impossible think that, like, to be on their side What anymore. Sony's doing with like PlayStation Plus is nowhere near as good as Game Pass. I yeah. want to make that explicitly clear. But their decision to withhold games from going on to PlayStation Plus until like well after seems to be the more viable option financially because you get the initial rush of sales in the beginning and when the title like loses some momentum, then you put it on your subscription service to yeah. try and get people in. So Microsoft has a problem where they just don't have a lot of people on their platform. Yes. So they have to do as much as they can to get them on the platform. And if Microsoft was true to their word from the very beginning of how great Game Pass was and all of their promises, then uh, there would be a great value and it would be reasonable to take a little bit of a loss on the one game, two game mm -hmm. sales a year to get people on the platform so that the next year you get a people stay on your platform they don't move over to playstation right. you've won the console war yay but they're they've proven to uh not be true to their word they've proven that uh there really is not a great value there yeah so it makes it harder for this to make sense which is why in june when they do their announcement there's probably going to be a lot of changes to game pass that are not good right 